Peter Schrager. In about three to four minutes from New York, all sorts of NFL stuff. There's a big story today. The Buffalo Bills are trying, quote, like hell, unquote, to trade up and take a quarterback. So what Buffalo wants to do is what the Philadelphia Eagles, the Super Bowl champs, did last year. Philadelphia started at 13. They made trades before the draft to get to eight. Remember, they traded a first-round pick and Kiko Alonso and Byron Maxwell. So they went. They had 13. They moved to eight, and then they went eight to two, and they got Carson Wentz. That's what Buffalo, according to this story this morning, Jason Lock and Fora, CBS Sports, they want it. They've already gone from like 21. They've moved up to 12. Now they want to move up. Now the question is, how far does Buffalo have to move up? Well, it's real simple. They're not moving up for a left tackle. The Buffalo Bills are moving up for a quarterback. Uh, I believe it's either Josh Allen. I think they'd like a big, strong kid who can throw it downfield. Uh, I think they'd like to move into the two spot if Dorsey doesn't take Sam Darnold. I think they like Darnold. I would guess they like a big, physical kid. So if you look at who's drafting ahead of Buffalo, they're in the 12th spot currently. Let We got little emojis here for the TV audience. Who's taking a quarterback and who's not? So we know the Browns at one and the Jets at three are. Nobody else needs one, okay? But we also know there are three teams that could be talked into it. Giants at two, Broncos at five, and Dolphins at 11. They got quarterbacks, but either they're old, marginal, or kind of ineffective. Giants two, Broncos five, Dolphins 11. Okay, Buffalo's not giving up a ton of picks to get burned by the number two New York Giants. I will say this again. The New York Giants control this draft. They've got a new general manager. They're in a division where Philadelphia is stacked for years. In a division where Washington's got multiple star players. Kerrigan, Trent Williams, Josh Norman. High-end players and now better at quarterback. They're in a division where Dallas has better personnel, 11 total picks, and only really needs an interior defensive lineman and a safety. Dallas is better than everybody thinks. You're not catching up and getting better with Saquon Barkley. This is a unique opportunity for the Giants to be able to get multiple picks from an absolutely desperate franchise. Buffalo doesn't, they, they, they don't have a starting quarterback now. So it very rarely in this league do you have an opportunity that a desperate football team calls you on the phone. And that you know they're desperate, and they know they're desperate. A lot of times, guy calls you on the phone. Well, we're really happy with what we have, but we are uh, we are uh, prospecting here. Buffalo's desperate. The Giants know they're desperate, and the Giants, according to stories, don't want a quarterback in a quarterback-rich draft. The Giants could use five new offensive guys. I like their young tight end. I don't want to pay Odell what he wants. Nate Solder's good. Arguably fourth best left tackle in that division. I like Snacks Harrison. Landon Collins is special. I don't know what I have with Eli Apple. The Giants have a lot of questions in a division with a loaded Eagle team and talented Washington and Dallas. I'm not mentioning the other NFC teams. Rams are stacked. Green Bay's got Aaron Rodgers. Seattle has Russell Wilson. San Francisco's now got Garoppolo. You want to change your roster, New York, this is it. Saquon Barkley's not solving those issues. So Buffalo, according to stories, would like to move up again. There's no way, in my opinion, they can risk a move up and not get to the number two slot where maybe Sam Darnold or Josh Allen, they take either, falls to them. I think they make it happen. I think it's smart. I thought it was smart what Philadelphia did. Very exciting. And with that, we go to New York via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Peter Schrager. All right, story comes out. You tell me legit or not that Cleveland is looking at Josh Allen number one, meaning the Giants or whoever has the second pick could get Darnold, many presume the top quarterback prospect. Do you buy the story? Does it have legs? Oh, I'm buying. It has legs, but more importantly, Colin, it has an arm, and it's Josh Allen's arm. And, you know, I was at the owners' meetings last week out there in Orlando, and I'm doing every conversation I could possibly have around the league. 
And the, the thought was, okay, well, you know, Jimmy Haslam was at the pro day for Sam Darnold. He was there with the family. Done deal, wrap it up. I do my mock draft, I say, he's the clubhouse leader, Darnold number one. I got texts from people within the Cleveland organization, almost snarky texts saying, wow, I'm glad you have a clubhouse leader because we haven't made our decision yet. The hay is not in the barn. They have not decided who they're taking number one yet. Here we are at April 3rd. I will say this, John Dorsey is the new general manager of the Cleveland Browns, one of the most respected personnel men in the entire NFL. He was the Kansas City GM last NFL draft. Who did he trade up 17 picks to get? Who did he give up future first round picks for? Patrick Mahomes. Why? That big, beautiful arm. This guy loves a big arm, and if you look at the Cleveland AFC North, you are playing in cold weather environments. You are playing in Pittsburgh. You are playing in Cincinnati. You are playing in Baltimore. There is no reason why a big arm wouldn't be the most advantageous skill set. Yeah, Sam Darnold might be a great kid, blue collar, the whole thing. Do not count out Josh Allen, number one to the Browns. I'm telling you, there is a lot of heat to that right now, and he's going to be meeting with all these teams. He might end up being the bell of the ball when it's all said and done. Jim Moore has taken a ton of heat, and everybody's freaking out because he said, Darnold to Cleveland may be a better fit. My takeaway is, I'm not sure he's doing Rosen a disservice by saying that. What is your read and takeaway on Mora, Rosen, and what appear to be sort of critical comments of Josh? You know, it, it comes out on NFL Network. He says this thing, and everyone said, not only does he say he doesn't think he should go first overall to Cleveland, but he says the crosstown rival should go and says because he's a better fit. I look at that, and Colin, call me naive, whatever. I, I think Josh Rosen's success is tied a little bit to Jim Morris. He wants to see the kid succeed. I think that's him saying – Man, I hope he doesn't go to Hugh Jackson. I hope he doesn't have to go to Cleveland and have the entire franchise on his back. I think he thinks the better fit is going to New York, where he can learn from Pat Shermer and Eli Manning. Or, better yet, go to New York Jets, where he can go with Jeremy Bates and learn from him. I didn't take that as a negative on Rosen. And I think Rosen, almost sarcastically tweeting out the, the why emoji yesterday and saying opinions, everybody's got them this time of year. I think he almost understands this, too. I don't think Mora was dragging the kid through the mud. Quite personally, I know that relationship. Mora, three years, I think Rosen was his best player. I think Rosen got the, he got the most out of Rosen, and Rosen got the most out of Mora. Their da his daughter's friends with Rosen. They live in the same neighborhood. I don't think this was him trying to kill the kid by any means. I just think everyone sees the word millennial, and it's got this toxic feeling towards it. I don't see it that way at all. And guess what? If a quarterback is the most intellectual guy on your team and a quarterback is the most opinionated guy on your team, if you're the New York Jets and the New York Giants, I don't think that's a bad thing in New York City. I'd rather have that than a wallflower who just says, yes, sir, no, ma'am, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I like the fact that he's talking about Rosen this way. And if going to Cleveland is a negative, fine, steer him elsewhere. He might be better off going to New York. All right, let's look at the draft board. We know who wants a quarterback, who doesn't. I believe Buffalo's doing what the Philadelphia Eagles did last year. I'm still surprised, and maybe they don't have the, the gravitas to picks, and Arizona's not moving up. Do you believe the current draft order, Browns, Giants, Jets, Browns, Broncos, Colts, Bucks, Bears, Niners, Raiders will remain that on draft day or Buffalo moves up. I think Buffalo is the biggest mover and shaker in this thing. And I look at free agency. You look at what the Arizona Cardinals did. They gave Sam Bradford $20 million. Steve Kime is one of the most respected general managers in the league. They felt like if they got a healthy Bradford, let's roll. It's one year deal. What's the risk? Let's go for it. The Denver Broncos, before even Kirk Cousins met with them, Gave Case Keenum a two-year deal that he's going to be making $20 million next season. Everyone jumped out of the gates and said, let me get this free agent quarterback. The Bills, they laid back. They said, okay, let's see who's left over. A.J. McCarron at $8 million, that's a good discount. I think there are two teams to watch here. I think the Giants at number two, you're right. I believe the Giants would be willing to trade down in this situation, but I don't think the Giants would be willing to trade down from two to 12. I think there has to be a two-way trade here. I think the Giants need to either trade down with Indianapolis first and then another trade with Buffalo because I think the Giants, quite honestly, I think the Giants want one of those other guys if they don't go a quarterback at number two. I don't think they want to miss out on Barkley, Nelson, or Chubb. So hear me out, Colin. I think there's a good chance that the, that the Bills either go up to six and just take Baker Mayfield and they're happy with that and, they're, and they sign off, okay, we got Baker Mayfield, we got our quarterback. Or the Bills play aggressor here and say, why don't we trade up with the Colts, the Colts trade down to 12. They give them the 12 to 22, whatever. And then the Giants trade down with Buffalo from 2 to 6 as opposed to 2 to 12. And the Giants can still get a Saquon Barkley, a Bradley Chubb, or a Quentin Nelson. I do believe that the Bills are going to move up. The question is, do they have the draft capital move all the way up to 2? They might have to trade even more to go up from 6 and then again up to 2. 
Brandon Bean, this is a guy who just traded away in one, one season, not even an offseason, gave away a former number four overall pick, Sammy Watkins, saying we don't need him. Marcel Darius, former number three pick, saying we don't need him. All focused on the 2018 draft. The Buffalo Bills have six of the top 100 picks. I would be shocked after waiting out and not being a big player in the free agency game at quarterback and saying, give us whoever's left over. A.J. McCarron, great. I believe they're all in on the draft. And knowing Brandon Bean, he is not scared of taking a big, sw big swing right here. One last note on that one, Colin. Dave Gettleman, GM of the Giants, number two overall pick. Who worked under him in Carolina for many years? Brandon Bean. These guys have a very close relationship. They know each other well. I wouldn't be shocked if the Giants and Bills figured something out some way, somehow. Finally, Odell Beckham. The media loves him. Doesn't mean general managers do. They don't like annex, and he is a fragile perimeter player. He's not a left tackle. He's not a quarterback. He's not a signal caller on defense. There are limitations, even to a Julio Jones, on producing Ws. So I look at Odell Beckham, and I think I'd give up a first-round pick for him. I think, is his name out there still? Is there a chance he wouldn't be a giant by the start of the season? There was actual smoke to that fire. I'm not going to put out that smoke at all. I, throughout the entire owners' meetings, I was talking to actual general managers face-to-face, -face, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, no, like that's a very interesting deal. And I can tell you that multiple teams did reach out to the Giants. No trade got done. It might be tough. The one thing that no one's talking about, everyone's saying, you can't trade Odell, you can't trade Odell. If Antonio Brown was on the trade market, I am telling you 32 teams would line up to, to trade for him. If Julio Jones is on the trade market, 32 teams. DeAndre Hopkins, 32 teams. Odell Beckham was pretty much told he's un no one is untouchable on the Giants. And 32 teams did not reach out for Odell Beckham. 16 teams did not reach out for Odell Beckham. A few teams, they, they, they searched around. They dug around and said, what's it going to take? We kind of got what the market was, and it kind of got cold. I would just say this. A guy entering the final year of his contract who has already said that he wants to be paid like a quarterback and has already said he might not take a snap the entire preseason, and a guy who's living in L.A. and enjoying living in L.A. this offseason has not been a wallflower in L.A. this offseason – might not have the same trade value as some of these other wide receivers. I would just say what the media and the fans think of Odell Beckham's market value might not be the same around the rest of the NFL. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.